This video is about Bayes' Rule. By the end of this video, you should be able to use Bayes' Rule to calculate posterior probabilities. Bayes' Rule is a formula that allows you to calculate the probability that one event happened given that some other event has happened. The formula for Bayes' Rule is the probability that some event E happens given that some other event F has happened equals the probability of F given E multiplied by the probability of E and divided by the probability of F. To see how Bayes' Rule works, we will consider some examples using tests for the novel coronavirus known as SARS-CoV-2. There are a couple of important terms to understand when examining the accuracy of tests like these. The first term to know is the sensitivity of a test, which tells you the probability that you will have a positive test result if you have the virus. The next term is the specificity of a test, which tells you the probability that you will have a negative test result if you don't have the virus. One minus the sensitivity of a test tells you the probability that you will get a negative test result if you have the virus. This is also known as the false negative rate of a test. 1 minus the specificity of a test tells you the probability of getting a positive test result if you don't have the virus, also known as the false positive rate. The last term to know is the prevalence of the virus, which measures the percent of the population that actually has the virus. Although we don't know this number exactly for SARS-CoV-2 because it is a new disease, we will use 5% as our estimate of the prevalence, as that is what the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has used in its calculations. For our examples, we will use the University of Arizona's antibody test, which is one of over 50 tests for SARS-CoV-2 listed on the U.S. Food and Drug Administration's website. This test has a sensitivity of 97.5% and a specificity of 99.1%. In the following examples, we'll use Bayes' rule to help you understand how to use these numbers to interpret some hypothetical test results. Suppose that you take the University of Arizona's antibody test and you get a positive test result. What is the probability that you actually have the virus? Put another way, what we want to know is what is the probability that you have the virus given that you have a positive test result. Using Bayes' rule, we know that the probability that you have the virus given that you have a positive test equals the probability that you have a positive test given that you have the virus multiplied by the probability that you have the virus and divided by the overall probability of having a positive test result. We know two pieces of this equation. The probability of having a positive test result if you have the virus is the sensitivity of the test. The probability that you have the virus is its prevalence in the population. But what is the overall probability that you have a positive test result? There are two ways that you can have a positive test result. First, you can have a positive test result when you have the virus. This is the sensitivity of the test. Second, you can have a positive test result when you don't have the virus. This is the false positive rate of the test, which is 1 minus the specificity of the test. Therefore, the overall probability of having a positive test result is the probability of getting a positive test result when you have the virus multiplied by the probability of having the virus plus the probability of getting a positive test result when you don't have the virus multiplied by the probability that you don't have the virus. This will equal the sensitivity of the test multiplied by the prevalence of the virus plus the false positive rate of the test multiplied by 1 minus the prevalence of the virus. We now have the information we need to answer our original question, which was, what is the probability that you actually have the virus if you get a positive test result? 
If we plug the appropriate numbers into the various parts of this equation, we find that the probability that you actually have the virus with a positive test result from the University of Arizona's antibody test is 85%. That is why if you get a positive test result, public health authorities will advise you to isolate yourself because it is very likely that you have the virus, even if you have no symptoms. Your physician will also likely verify the antibody test result with an even more sensitive and specific test, such as a polymerase chain reaction test, which is the gold standard test for the coronavirus. We could ask the same question for a negative test result. Given that you test negative, what is the probability that you truly don't have the virus? Using Bayes' rule, we can see that the probability that you don't have the virus given that you tested negative, is the probability of having a negative test result when you don't have the virus multiplied by the probability of not having the virus and divided by the overall probability of a negative test. We know that the probability of having a negative test result when you don't have the virus is the specificity of the test, which is 99.1%. And the probability of not having the virus is 1 minus the prevalence, which is 95%. We also know from our previous example that the overall probability of having a negative test is the probability of getting a negative test when you don't have the virus multiplied by the probability of not having the virus plus the probability of having a negative test when you do have the virus multiplied by the probability of having the virus. This equals the specificity of the test multiplied by 1 minus the prevalence plus the false negative rate multiplied by the prevalence of the virus. Remember that the false negative rate of a test equals 1 minus the test's sensitivity. If we plug the appropriate numbers into this equation, we find that if you have a negative test result, the chances that you truly don't have the virus are very high, almost 1. This is not an accident. Tests like this are almost always designed to provide reliable negative results because people who get negative results tend to walk away. If we are going to let people go about their lives, we want to be very sure that if they get a negative test result, that they are really, truly negative. To do otherwise would be irresponsible, particularly for a virus like SARS-CoV-2, which can cause serious complications or even death. This concludes this video on Bayes' Rule. Bayes' Rule is one of the most useful tools in statistics, so I hope that you find lots of occasions on which you can use it to calculate posterior probabilities. Thank you for watching.